Welcome to CoreLogic's update on housing market conditions for November 2018. Brought to you by First National Real Estate. The housing market continued to lose steam last month with national dwelling values slipping half a percent, taking the overall market three and a half percent below the recent peak. National dwelling values haven't fallen this much over a single year since February 2012. On a rolling quarterly basis, dwelling values are now trending lower across both the combined capital city regions, where they are 1.6% lower, as well as across the combined regional areas of Australia where values were down almost 1%. With such broad-based weakness in housing market conditions, it's clear that tighter credit availability is acting as a drag on housing demand and impacting adversely on the performance of housing values across most areas of the country. The weakest conditions continue to be felt across Australia's two largest cities where investment buyers have been the most concentrated, where supply additions have been the highest and also where housing affordability is the most stretched. Sydney dwelling values were down 7.4% over the past 12 months and Melbourne values are 4.7% lower over the same period. Values also declined in Perth and Darwin, however the downturn in these two cities has been ongoing since mid-2014, with values falling 3.3% and 2.9% respectively over the past 12 months. Although dwelling values are rising on an annual basis across the remaining cities, the pace of growth has eased relative to a year ago. The regional housing markets of Australia have also returned to diverse performance, with regional Tasmania standing out as the only broad region nationally with dwelling values recording double-digit growth, up 11.4%. Both Hobart and regional Tasmania continue to record strong housing market conditions, driven by robust housing demand coupled with a shortage of supply. Regional Victoria is also showing strong growth conditions as demand continues to ripple outwards from Melbourne towards the more affordable cities peripheral to the city's metropolitan area. Regional Western Australia continued to show challenging conditions with the annual pace of decline revealing some renewed momentum with values falling by 6.5% over the past 12 months. Nationally, the highest value quarter of the market has led the downturn, with values falling 6.6% across this segment over the past year, while lower quartile values have recorded a 0.5% rise in values. At such a broad geographic level, the weakness in higher value markets is reflective of the weaker conditions across the capital cities, particularly in Sydney and Melbourne. The disparity of performance between the upper and the lower quartiles is clear in individual cities as well. In Melbourne, the top 25% of the market by value has seen values fall by almost 9% over the past 12 months. A slightly weaker performance than Sydney's upper quartile where values were down by 8.6%. At the same time, more affordable housing markets have seen a 2.9% rise in values across Melbourne over the past year, while Sydney's lower quartile has recorded a fall that is almost half that of the upper quartile. Gross rental yields are slowly recovering as dwelling values trend lower and rents edge higher. Nationally, gross rental yields are picking up from the previous record lows, rising from 3.7% in October last year to reach 3.8% in October 2018. Despite the subtle rise, gross rental yields remain well below the decade average of 4.3%. A recovery in rental yields back to average levels is likely to take some time considering national rents have remained relatively flat over the year to date and they're only 0.8% higher over the past 12 months. Rental yields reached record lows in late 2017 due to values consistently rising at a much faster pace than rents through the growth phase. Rental yields were compressed more significantly in Sydney and Melbourne, reaching record low readings of 3% and 3.1% respectively in 2017. These cities are still recording the lowest yield profiles at 3.24% and 3.34% at the end of October 2018. Rental yields are the highest in Darwin at 5.7% and Hobart at 4.9%. However, both these cities are seeing rental yields trending lower as dwelling value movements are more positive relative to rental movements. Melbourne's housing market was the weakest performing capital city over the past three months, with dwelling values falling 2.1%. The upper quarter of Melbourne's housing market, which includes those dwellings valued over 920,000, has felt the brunt of the downturn. Top quartile properties have recorded a decline of 8.9% over the past 12 months, while the most affordable quarter of the market has actually recorded a 2.9% rise in values. 
As Melbourne dwelling values trend lower, rental rates are recording a modest rise, which is supporting a gradual improvement in gross rental yields. Despite the improved rental return, yields still need to rise a long way before they're close to their long-term average of 3.75%. The downturn in housing market conditions has been relatively mild to date, with a 3.5% fall in dwelling values over the past 12 months, coming on the back of a 34% rise in national dwelling values over the growth cycle. With credit availability remaining tight, as well as rising inventory levels, we are expecting there will be some further downwards pressure on housing values as we move through spring and into the summer and into the new year. Advertised stock levels are tracking 10.5% higher relative to the same time last year, with total listing numbers almost 20% higher across Sydney and Melbourne. With total listing numbers likely to push higher over the final quarter of the year, buyers are becoming more empowered and will increasingly find themselves in a stronger position when it comes to negotiating on price. While stock levels are higher, transactional activity has reduced. CoreLogic estimates that year-on-year -year settled sales activity is down 11.5%, leading to a slower rate of absorption through the spring listing season. A key driver of lower housing market participation is related to credit availability. Annual growth in housing credit slipped to 5.2% in September. That's the lowest reading in almost five years. While investment credit growth has been trending lower for several years, credit for owner-occupiers has more recently contracted, as lenders seek out borrowers with more substantial deposits and banks lift their serviceability criteria. Although housing credit originations remain well below the formal APRA targets for investment lending and interest-only lending, it's clear that lenders are also focusing more on loan serviceability and reducing their exposure to borrowers with high debt levels relative to their incomes. These measures can help to explain the underperformance of more expensive housing markets, where borrowers may find it more challenging to secure finance. While there are plenty of headwinds for housing market conditions, we're also seeing other factors helping to support housing demand. In fact, the triggers for a more substantial deterioration in housing values remain absent from the market. Labor markets have tightened over the year, with unemployment at 5%, jobs growth outpacing growth in the labor force, and a skew towards full-time jobs creation rather than part-time. Tighter conditions across the labour markets could gradually support a further improvement in wages growth, which would provide an additional boost to housing affordability and support reductions in household debt levels. As housing values trend lower and household incomes inch higher, we're seeing improvements in housing affordability, which is likely to support further improvements in first home buyer numbers. First home buyers have surged higher across New South Wales and Victoria, where stamp duty concessions are made available and the further improvements in housing affordability is likely to be a welcome development from this sector of the market. Recent data from Standard & Poor's tracking mortgage arrears showed loans more than 90 days past due were tracking higher but continue to track well below 1%. Improving labour market conditions and ongoing low mortgage rates will help to keep arrears rates low. With so much going on in the housing market and many of the fundamental drivers moving in different directions, it's more important than ever to stay abreast of conditions. CoreLogic is your one-stop shop for all things related to housing market research. Visit our website at www.corelogic.com.au.